what do we have here? Okay. Uh, all of this started uh, when I was building a... Uh, originally, I was building this song. <laughs> Humor song and a friend of mine had one, and she had the idea uh, that it was a great saw because you didn't have to push a dent in your uh, mm -hmm. chest to tension the blade. So she loved this idea of being able to tighten this and tension the blade. So she said to me, Lee, you ought to make one of those as a, uh, a jeweler's saw. That, that's my background, is into jewelry tools. So I said, yeah, right, okay. I'm not gonna bother doing that. Uh, I had enough stuff on my plate. So then uh, she kept, for about three years, kept after me, I'm, I'm a hard sell. <laughs> uh, so finally she said, Lee, Look, I'm using this as my regular bench saw. Now, this is a ridiculous saw for freehanding. It's not designed for this at all. And she said, and I said, well, why? Because it's really rigid. I break fewer blades. I can saw where I want to because I'm not having to chase the blade following where it wants to go. It has no opportunity to uh, do anything except go where I want to go. So I took one of these and cut off all the excess, uh, you know, to at least cut away all the material, drilled some holes in it, and decided, okay, try this out. So she wrote back and says, it's great, it could be better, and I agreed. So that led eventually to what became the equivalent, which is uh, this saw here. <laughs> And that was the start of it. So this is uh, the current model. Uh, this is the five inch deep from here to here. Uh, and it is able to uh, tension the blade with this cam. And I can flip the, uh, the blade from straight ahead to 45 left or 45 right. Beautiful feature. Does it and have stops? It has stops. Okay. And so you got tension. Uh, this is for fine adjust here uh, for for the adjusting the tension. And so they lock into place. It goes all the way down to an eight aught uh, jeweler saw blade, all the way up to a number fourteen. Uh, woodworking blade. It's number seven that's in there now, which is about the right size for uh, cutting dovetail waste. If all you're doing is cutting dovetails, you can readily use this one. This is a th three inch, because when I flip the blades at 45 degrees, I could readily be cutting a dovetail that deep and you rarely go that deep. If you uh, keep the this face here horizontal, that's parallel with the blade, and you can saw straight. Nice. Try to keep it, that's your visual focal plane. Then, get rid of this. The coping saw, same basic principle. It's a heavier uh, thickness of material. It's three sixteenths. Um, let's see. The lever is the same sort of thing. It's longer with more of a throw. Uh, the use the standard coping saw blades. Locks in place and flip the lever, and there is a ping you've never heard on a coping saw. It's more a, a thud, yeah. okay? To change, uh, to change the angle on the blade, 
you push down and rotate. Either one way or the other. In 45 degree stops, and it, it locks in those places, a full 360. And the same up here, then I have to hold that down and then rotate. Um, no, it's the same thing, same thing. So okay. they do the handles. They just make the handles. Yeah. You sell them with We, we sell them with the basic And so yeah. at that well, point, these, that's these the, uh, the coping saw. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, it's beautiful. It looks like you have, is this a progression of the designs? Or? Yes. The titanium saw, which are these here, this one was uh, originally cut from uh, rejected material from the F-22 program, and so it was very cheap, relatively speaking, and they looked a lot like uh, this. It was all, all one piece. Those are aluminum. And one piece cut out of a slab. These are welded titanium. Until I ran out of that material, uh, they were a good uh, value. Why did you run out so fast? People keep buying. <laughs> it is so incredibly rigid that if I were to hold this. You just simply can't squeeze this together. Okay. Um, so when I ran out of the material, I started working on another uh, design. Yeah. And what we did was separate this leg from this leg, and we now mounted it close together on the sheet because the cost of the material you just can't waste it. So these were sitting side by side with only 40,000 clearance between the parts. So I got this one and I got this one. Now I had to join it together. So my first thought was, okay, I'll just take a, a couple of 16th inch thick pieces and we'll rivet it together. This was one of the first trials. And it's great strength. Except for this. In reality, this would probably be fine. But visually, I can't sell this. Okay? So then that led to some more midnight oil burning. And Brian Meek came up with this design here, which is to uh, triangulate all, all of this stuff. And we're welding the uh, these pieces here, 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 and here, uh, adding a, a little cross piece here. And then we're orbital riveting these in position here under high pressure uh, to set everything down. And this is incredibly rigid. It just doesn't move at all. Give it a try. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. The features are a lot the same. It uses the same lever arrangement, tensioning, uh, the blades tilt at 45 degrees, uh, each the same as the others, and that's just about it. What kind of price range are we talking about? Uh, they range in the aluminum, which is the, uh, the lower uh, priced line. This is 93, uh, the 5 inch is 95. The 8 inch, which is used primarily for marketry and so forth, uh, that's 103. The coping saw is uh, 149. The titanium starting at uh, the 3 inch, once again, that's 195. The same as the original price before, uh, 195. 215, 225. Then there is a really dressed up version. Coca Bola? That's Coca Bola, handled done by Elkhead Tools. Uh, and we also colorize the titanium as well. And uh, that one's 350. <laughs> Who, um, as far as your target art audience, is it mostly marquetry or jewelry or joinery or all of the above? All of the above, equally. Well, uh, for example, there, uh, Donna, who's here uh, teaching a uh, uh, class in marquetry, 
she's coming by to pick this one up at the end, end of this end, end of the show. Nice. Uh, for reaching deeper into the frame. Uh, the uh, I do jewelry as well. That was where our first uh, direction was. Uh, Don Williams, who uh, is with the Smithsonian, uh, he's the director of conservancy uh, there, is doing these uh, pieces, these bool. And wow. turn the pack over. There's the same part, the reverse. Oh, image. wow. Amazing. That's incredible. And these are used uh, in furniture, as in insects and things of that nature. Beautiful. It's not amazing. Yeah. Sadly, you see lasers replace that now. Well, yeah, but this is all still being done by hand. Yeah. And. I think it's, you know, to each his own, but I prefer the, the handmade. Oh, I do as well. That's really what it's all about. Beautiful. And yet I'm mixing handmade with uh, state-of-the-art technology. Thank you, please.